Good morning. My name is Bram Hovarts, and it's a pleasure to present to you today. You are, of course, the new generation that need to make, make, make things happen in the world. Therefore, it is my honor to present to you this presentation with the title, The Power of Young Research to Transform Agri-Food Systems. It is my pleasure and honor to be the Director General of one of the most important research organizations globally. CIMIT, or the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, as one of the centers of the CGIR, is responsible not only for maize and wheat, two of the three most important crops that feed the world, but also for important crops like sorghum, millet, groundnuts, that are key in a healthy diet. Historically, CIMIT has had huge impact. For example, 70% of the wheat seeds and more than 50% of the maize sown grow worldwide are derived from CIMIT cultivated materials. We have operations in over 49 countries and are, of course, working hard in many, many projects in the core countries in the South. We have offices, as you can see in this map, and if we calculate the return on investment for every dollar, for every yen invested in our research, we have between $70 to $100 return for wheat and between $20 to $35 return for maize. So overall, a very good investment. Where it not that that investment does not go back to Simit's bank account or to any uh, uh, any income related for the organization, it goes back to the value chain and to the farmers, which is of course part of our mission to lift farm and farmers and farm families out of poverty. That mission comes from a very rich history, a history where you can see here the Nobel Peace Prize winner uh, Norman Borlaug is together looking at wheat dwarf uh, material. In that sense. Those wheat varieties were sent, sent to India, Nepal, Bangladesh, and generated the famous Green Revolution. In that sense, it's also still today that CIMIT benefits, uh, generates benefit for farmers globally uh, of several, several billion dollars every year. We never forget that we are at the service of over 18 million farmers that are benefiting through our improved maize and wheat systems. The importance of wheat became very, very clear when we could see that the global import was disrupted, the global markets were disrupted by the Ukraine crisis. Ukraine crisis underscored the need for long-term solutions for global food security. During that, why? Because that crisis provoked that around 6 million hectares in farmers' fields of wheat that are grown in Ukraine were all of a sudden no longer available to be exported to over 10 wheat importing countries, like the ones we see here on the map that immediately offset high wheat prices, and of course also globally, infl inflation is hitting the world economy. This is a summary of what we call the four Cs. We have a crisis, we have conflict, we have post-COVID efforts, we have climate change, and we have the cost of living. In that sense, we can see that early warning signs are already there that either identify new hunger spots are approaching. It is also very, very clear that the crisis, when it, when it is unfolding and when there's hunger somewhere, it is way more costly than investing in research, innovation and development that avoids such crises and that avoids people having hunger. Therefore, CIMIT has rebranded or refurbished uh, its research agenda. We're in the middle of a strategy exercise in which we extensively are looking at climate change as a central axe into, as well for adaptation of mit, as mitigation in our research agenda. Our climate-focused research aims to help smallholder farmers to adapt to climate shocks and to raise and maintain yields profitably and sustainably by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We also want to uh, increase the capacity and the license of farmers and, and all stakeholders in the value chain to apply uh, uh, the, uh, the developed technologies and innovations. It all starts with the rich, natural gift of biodiversity. CIMIT safeguards 140,000 wheat samples and 28,000 made samples all collected in one big seed vault. What CIMIT has done is characterized through a molecular atlas of maize and wheat, the characteristics that are sitting in that maize and wheat and connected uh, to their uh, on-farm characteristics. Based on those, on that biodiversity, we generate new seeds, seeds that are sent every year around the globe. Every blue dot on this map is a package of wheat. Every red dot on this map is a uh, seed that is going to that place 
So over 500,000 seed packages are sent every year to all those locations, including China, where, of course, local actors are then using those packages, are using those new seeds to test if they respond to the local needs. For example, it is not the same to use wheat for bread than for pasta, as you all know. It's not the same to use it for noodles than to use it for Italian pasta type products. Also, it's not the same to plant a variety of wheat in the north of Mexico or to plant it in the, uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, areas or in the Chinese areas, or, or for example, the Ethiopian highlands. All the same for maize. Simit maize varietal releases have been stacking characteristics, not only related to higher yields, but also related to drought resistant, nutrition efficiency, and of course, higher nutritional value in the grain itself. The same for our uh, wheat varieties. Our wheat varieties combine higher zinc, better resistance to drought, and of course, nitrogen use efficiency. And they're sent to places globally. Now, of course, if we only send seed, that is not enough. We need to set up the seed sector so that farmers can be served by all those seeds that we make available. Not in all countries and or on all continents that seed sector is so vibrant. So CIMIT works with networks of seed companies in order to connect them to the latest germplasm and the latest new seeds so they can multiply and deploy it to the farmers. They can listen better to farmers' needs and select those new, act, uh, those new seeds that we have and uh, use those that are really responding to the needs of farmers in their area where they want to market their seeds. In that sense, we set up what we call um, IMIC. NARS and seed companies come together, and today there are over 87 of those that together are actually using CIMIT's uh, new uh, seeds that we have uh, researched based on the biodiversity that we find in our, germ in our, in our gene bank, and those are then multiplied and, of course, sold to farmers so they can use it in their fields. In that sense, we have an integrated approach that starts from the healthy diet and ends up with the consumer consuming that healthy diet. And in the middle, we use the biodiversity, we do targeted breeding, we generate the seeds in the seed systems, and of course, seed alone will not work if we don't plant it in the right circumstances. So the economic interventions of uh, better uh, planting uh, machines, of better integrated pest control, of the use of integrated uh, nutrition efforts like nitrogen efficiency, the use of post-harvest, and of course, all that into in working systems like conservation agriculture can then produce higher yields that are resistant to eventual droughts in order to have a higher local production that can feed the farmer's family. But maybe there's some access that can go to a market. That market can be a local market in the village, or it can be a regional market. And usually it is then stored and it can then go to the processing companies, which can be a local shop, or it can be the processing food industry. And through those food, that in food industry, it goes back to that same consumer. Underlying this whole effort is a big data system that needs to harvest the data in order to take the right decisions. And of course, public policy, public-private partnerships, and the involvement of the civil society. Using this system, CIMIT has done climate change work in Africa. The results have been very clear. In Zimbabwe, for example, drought or maize yielded over 0.6 tons per hectare more and it has generated 240 income extra per hectare. In Malawi, we are looking at increased yields, but also farmers harvested more maize while they spent less days in the field, between 35 and 45. New wheat varieties in Ethiopia, like uh, uh, Pavon uh, 75, which is a, a relatively old wheat varieties, but you can see like Kingbird and other varieties are new ones that became more popular than that uh, old uh, variety. Our climate change work in Asia is uh, based on, for example, the happy seeder, a new seeding equipment that can perfectly plant into uh, rice straw that otherwise farmers would burn in order to be able to plant the next wheat. By planting it directly and by reducing the use of force or fraction, and therefore also the use of gasoline, the, 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 those practices can become more profitable. And it can help, of course, to increase the quality of air and to reduce the use of fertilizer. More than 200,000 farmers are today growing wheat using this innovative practice, zero tillage. We leave the residue, we plant directly with the happy cedar, and this happens in Bangladesh, India, and Nepal. 
Also in Latin America, we have been very active. And due to our dynamic breeding efforts, we have now released over 70 new hybrids in the recent 10 years. And uh, of course, 17 new wheat varieties. Over 500,000 farmers uh, grow uh, maize, wheat, and other uh, crops, not only in Mexico, but also beyond. Only, uh, uh, only in Mexico or in Mexico alone, but better said, a million hectares have been transformed into more sustainable practices. In average, yields have grown and, in, and especially in, uh, income has increased by 25%. For you as the young new generation, for you as scientists that need to design the future, it is very important to ask you one central question. When historians pick up their pens and write the story of the 21st century, what will it say about you? In order to together work towards a better world, you have therefore trained over more than 10,000 technicians and researchers worldwide. More than 400 certified technicians, which are farm advisors that have a certification in sustainable agriculture, have uh, uh, looked and developed new methodologies, new ways of uh, taking innovations to farmers. While over 70,000 farmers have participated in educational events uh, uh, in cement sites. We have developed a learning platform and we invite you to look for it. It is called uh, Simit Academy and it can be found under lms.simit.org or simply go to Simit's www.simit.org website and you will find the Simit Academy available for training and workshops and for three uh, student research topics. Young scientists from all over the world are breaking ground in Simit, and you can read some of their profiles and you can see some pictures here on uh, the website and maybe these their stories are an inspiration for you how they made it actually to uh, make their dream come true many of them would never have imagined to actually be serving the world as they do today but for many it was a, it was a dream coming through so you can read the story for example of andrea gardia sao who today does monitoring evaluation and learning uses ICT for agriculture in CIMIT. She's a Colombian, a political science by, scientist by training. She is uh, acknowledging today the power of data and statistics to generate change. And she's aware of the potential gap between those that understand ICT and those that don't. She's actually the one that underpinned our efforts in the innovation hubs that we installed in Mexico, where we take the long-term trials, trials where we compare different practices, and extract from that the knowledge and do on-farm trials where uh, side by side, we try the new practice with the improved practices of the, for the, of the farmer. You can see one of those efforts here on the photograph. Actually the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this photo are the same seeds, same machine, same planting date, everything is the same. The difference is the left side is conservation agriculture, maize wheat rotation, leaving the residue in the field, while the right side is the farmer conventional practice, which is maize maize, taking away the residue and not doing crop rotation and do a lot of plowing. That knowledge is then taken to those on-farm trials and we harvest the data of that in order for farmers to replicate those efforts and practices on the on-farm uh, plots where they just apply the practice and we can measure how the impact has, what the impact is that that generates. Above all this effort, you have this uh, big network of points, and each point is a researcher, it's a, 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 a seed buyer, it's a company, it's an input supplier, it's an extension service agent, it's a government agency that all comes together in an innovation network that learns from what we physically have installed in a certain agroecology based on platforms, thousands of on-farm on -farm trials that are connected to even more thousands of on-farm application fields all with innovative farmers. That whole effort is underpinned with what we call a data system that sources the data into the big, uh, big crowdsource database, which can then respond to the uh, indicators from the sustainable development goals. It can develop dashboards to see how the project uh, moves on, but it can also generate data to, the, to determine our impact indicators. More importantly, the system is called eAgrology and it generates also information for the farmer itself. It gives the maize network and the technical uh, uh, advisors information on how to take better decisions. But it also gives information to a farmer to better take design scenarios for his upcoming crop. Jelle as mechanization expert goes further than only being creative. 
he wants to really put that creativity into designing new machines. He's a Belgian from origin and he was actually an agricultural engineer. Today, he specialized in smart agriculture. Not only he keeps his knowledge in Mexico, he can work of collaborators that actually are uh, based in South Asia and Africa. And so we do cross-continental learning. And the new uh, initiative that has been launched recently by the CGIR, which is called the AgriLac Resiliente. And it's a CGIR initiative that increases resilience, sustainability, and competitiveness in Latin America and the Caribbean. That knowledge is about machinery, that knowledge about conservation agriculture, that knowledge about data systems comes all together and is integrated in one big effort in Colombia, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Peru. We're very proud of our recent uh, recognition for yet another young talent. And this, the next one, could be you. For example, Leonardo Crespo is 29 years old and received recently the nomination for the very prestigious 2022 Japan International Award for Young Agricultural Scientists. He recognizes his work on genetic improvement of wheat and where he worked on enhancing wheat for insect resistance. Let it be crystal clear. As a smart man once said, if you do not think about the future, you cannot have one. We need all of you to together come together and discuss and think, how are we gonna use agriculture to build peace? We are convinced as Norman Borov was, that you cannot build peace on empty stomachs. Peace can only be built through a sustainable agriculture that shifts from efficiency to resilience. And therefore, we have generated a platform of action. Today, I gave you a quick overview of what CIMIT is about. I also gave you a few stories of young scientists. I once was a young scientist myself and started basically helping to design some of the long-term trials to plant it, to take measurements on soil moisture. Little would I did I know that one day I would have the opportunity to actually lead the entire global organization in which I started my actually PhD research. If this happened to me, imagine what can happen to each and every one of you who are way more smarter, smarter, way more skilled than I am. Together, I am convinced if you work together as a team that we can attack the four C's of this current challenging world. We can design agricultural systems that are resilient, that can produce affordable and nutritious food for all in the world, despite the crisis of post-COVID, the crisis of conflict, the crisis of climate change, and the crisis of cost of living. But it will not happen by itself. It will happen by you as young talented scientists to imagine a better future and remember those that think about the future will have one. Thanks a lot.